Yeah, hello everyone. Today I received it for service Nakai GX9. Uh, it's a Japanese model, 100 volts. So we will be working on it. It looks nice. Uh, let's power on. Okay, it's, it's powers. Pass forward, rewind. Playback looks to be working. Let's remove the cover. Technically, do, do you know that that's the only model when you can remove cover without closing the door? Oops, like that. <laughs> that's the only model I know. Okay, let me see what's the head condition. My original pinch rollers. It looks in a good shape, heads fine. Ha uh ha. -huh. Right guide. I'm not sure if you see, but it was glued. See this white residue? Mm, it's pretty strange. They never ever <laughs> get broken unless they've been fixed <laughs> due to other reasons. So the only reason I can imagine that someone was lubricating the fish roller arms from both sides and like during this work they suddenly were the pulling tape or installing tape and they can broke it okay let's see let's see if it's real work with the tape fast forward divide works fine playback uh, left channel something Nothing on the right. So let's find a different spot with the test tape. Define it normal type. Okay. Now we have something on the left channel. Okay, let's install the tape. Our I hundred percent sure is re music recorded. Okay. Here we go. We have a signal. Good levels. All right. So next, uh, let me work on it. Let me uh, look at the tape transports and do tuning. Uh, owner requested uh, to do recapping for the sound pass. So that's what I will be looking into. And right after that, we may take a look on the final results. So let's see. Isomot and frequency response. So that's the oscilloscope. Let's connect it. I didn't get it. We have some level on the output. Uh, I don't see anything here. And it's not adjust. Ah, we lost here. Okay. Now we're good. Now there's still something wrong. You see the needle, it reacts to the level. So we have some issue. And this issue on the right channel. Let me turn off lights. Oh, yeah. It's getting better. So it just deck reacts to my LED lamp power supply. Oh, yeah. Hundred. Hundred. Okay. Let me see. Frequency sweep. Oh, I have levels. Good. So, why the mode is, is almost there. Technically, it's good. And here is the levels. Levels good. So, it's approximately the correct level. Let's see. So, four kilo gears, we're going down. Let's see how it goes up. Now, we're going up. 
Let's keep swell, three, four, five, starting to drop a little bit, eight, nine, ten, okay, there is uh, some drop, but not critical, we will be able to adjust it just using the pots, so nothing terrible, keeps face pretty well to 15 kilohertz, so I would say uh, this deck has no big issues. Now let me see and work on the minor issues. I am already did show a couple of times how to work on this tape transport, so not a big deal. I just mentioned that it has lost two oil washers. Unfortunately, I'm run out of oil washers. And now I would not be able to <laughs> install so we'll see. Hi, see you in the next part. And here, guys, I'm disassembled and already lubricated capstans. I mentioned that uh, spacers from this side has been lost too. And as this capstan will be pulled back by the magnet to the metal plate, uh, but this one would not, so I put install it. The, a plastic spacer uh, so it will roll easily in any position right, what else I had to replace belt the one which has been installed is not original it's very thick and it's bent so you see we don't keep it straight form so it would give a bad wow and flutter so it's technically trash I installed it the thinner which is flexible, the brand I trust to, and this works pretty well. The other belt, an idler, has been replaced as well, so I believe they are good. So I still like to check everything and then we'll assemble. See you in the next part. And here, guys, I just check it tape pass with my gauge. It's appeared to be uh, on factory settings, nothing changed, and everything sits correctly. Now I'm installing the torque cassette. And uh, what I like with Sakai tape transport, check more than 120 grams. And fast forward the same. See, it max out uh, with good idler. Okay, let me repeat. So you see, it's maxing out. Is a good idea. Okay, now play back 65. A little bit above the range should be between 40 and 60, but it's still fine. It should be playing good. So now when tape transport is complete, I would be listening to the sound, adjusting and then we'll make a decision if uh, replacement of the capacitor is needed. So far, I definitely hear a little bit less high frequencies on the audio recording I had. So work on this deck is quite easy. There are just two adjustments here through this hole and down there and all other down below on this side and calibration ports here on the top. That's it not many adjustments on this deck i hope it will perform really well see you soon and here guys i'm adjusting the dc voltage on this channel is named dc offset so i was lucky i get like uh, three millivolts three two millivolts on the one channel and now and it was 120 millivolts now I have to find the contact point TP, another one here. And you see it's half a volt. Wow. It's drifted over time. So these two ports, one channel, another channel. Our goal is to get to as close to zero as possible. Okay, positive direction. Oops much Aye, 10 millivolts is, is good with this process it's hard to get more 
so that's it for this stage next i will be playing frequency response tape observing values and adjusting this this port and this port here for each channel to make sure that uh, amplitude would be the same between like 400 gears and up to 15 kilohertz. So I'm installing the tape. It's playing. Uh -huh. Yeah. Azimut is a little bit off. I would rather fix it because otherwise we wouldn't be able to get a good various. It's pretty sensitive. This is the Kazimot, I believe is on the right side, let me see. Yeah, you see, Kazimot is on the right side, and here is the height and tilt. I... There is another picture, D. Playback, hit, hit azimut, yes, QD. It is close, but we will be tuning, it's fine. So let's make it even closer. It will be a, a teeny fraction. Direction. All right. Done. And now we may adjust the spots. Come on. Let me see the values. It's changing like about two decibels. It's a little bit too much. So see we're going down, it's get uh, plus one decibel on right channel and zero on the left. And we will be achieving the same results on the high frequencies. So let me adjust it. Uh, this on the one channel, see? I'm increasing it. It will be almost the same plus one. Okay, half decibel. Good, so I can lift with it and on the other channel. Hi. Now the technically half a decibel on the whole range. They shouldn't be changing more. changing a little bit. Come on. I like this deck to sound good. Hmm. If I will get more, you've seen like one three kilohertz. It's already plus one decibel without adjusting head capacitors, it wouldn't be flat. So like plus minus one decibel is fine, but more will be better. I will leave it as this. Now let's adjust the levels. Let me get the level tape. this deck levels 
Uh, play back level. Zero VU minus six decibel. I on three fifteen or no, minus six point six on three three three. Okay. Max start. It's a little bit too much. It shows technically the proper Dolby level, but I believe it's about one decibel higher than it should be. So let's get into it. So it should be minus six. Let me check Dolby. Yes, it's it's on the edge of Dolby level. So we will put minus five. Both channels, yeah. so it will be matching indicator because if you will not do this, indicator will show improper values. Okay, now level seven. Azimuth is nice, and uh, looking into this diagram face, amplitude, and everything is perfect. Okay, good. Now we put to tune recording. And to do that, we need to get into the test mode. And that's where I have to power off. Keep the chrome position indicator. And turn it on. Uh, no. Let me see. It should not be calibrated tape. It should be starting recording immediately. Yeah, see? It didn't do calibration. Good. Now we can connect generator. Sorry, I need to push a little bit here. Four hundred hertz. Recording. Oops, we not recording. No recording. And switching source tape minus one decibel. We will be adjusting these two tiny pots. Uh -huh. One channel. And the other channel, switch and source tape, source, tape, perfect. Now reducing to minus 20 decibel. Setting level. Even. So let's just go to one kilohertz. It's a little up. And this is tape and the source tape. See, on one kilohertz, it's a little bit higher. Uh, 11 source tip. Oh, you see, it's under biasing and under biasing significantly. Let me see here for normal tape. 
there is two ports down there, so there's two holes. Okay. Come on, it's hard to get as a chin, so source trip good eleven kilohertz, one kilohertz, eleven, one. Oh, yeah, good tuned so for type one we should be good azimuth is good it's not ideal but still good level set and now i have to set levels for the chrome tape and normal tape and chrome and metal tape sorry Install in metal tape, recording, so, see, for chrome tape, you need to increase a little bit, and that's this hole right here, I'm using plastic screwdriver, just to make sure. It will be good, so I'm done. So, source tip okay. one eleven, one eleven, perfect, done. And we have also metal tip already using the DKMA. And step one kilohertz, fifteen kilohertz, one fifteen. Really good results. And step right here, one fifteen. Nothing need to be touched. Good. We completed with the settings. Now I can listen to the tapes to measure the frequency response and see how this deck performs. See you, bye-bye. Hey guys, here I'm testing wow and flutter. And uh, speed is a little bit too high and wow and flutter is not pleasant. Even after I replace it, so let me just speed. After I replace it, the belt, wow and flutter is still a little bit on the high side. It's still hard to hear it, and as you see on the oscilloscope, it should be fine. But I'm afraid this uh, strong tension on the take-up roller <laughs> do is, does its its bad job. It's probably a right capstan is not so mad anymore as it was as it was original. Uh, you see left is uh, polished and right was not not polished All right that's what we have not ideal not still still may may work good i i wasn't able to hear that uh, and this values like even like if you will record and play it's pretty hard to hear All right Let's do some recording test. So calibrate. Right, you see how quickly it calibrates. Now let me just to the spectrum analyzer. No white noise. Minus twenty. So here are the source. And here we recording. Is a little bit lower on the high end. 
when I, I was tuning using MIDI Vault filter. Now I see I need to adjust a little bit back on the high frequencies. Okay, let me recalibrate. Calibrate it, check again. And be much better. It's right there, it should be. So here is the source. And here is the tape. Okay, let's see minus 10. Uh huh, not gonna commission tier one. Minus 6. Yeah, on type 1, struggling a little bit. Next, um, let's put type 2. Here is type 2 tape. Calibrate it. Okay, good. Hi, right, this looks good. So, here is the source. Here is the tape. It's fine. I may adjust just a little bit on the high edge. So, let me recalibrate the tape, so it would be even better. Yeah, you see now, it's start to drop after 16 kilohertz. Technically, up to minor, up to 20 kilohertz, minus three decibel. Uh, and the metal tape. Channel a little bit higher on the bias. Let's calibrate. So sometimes it is calibrated so quick that results are not precise. Yeah, still, still left channel is higher than the right one. Okay, let's check on the Sony tape. Sony tape uh, more even this edge. Calibrated, and here is the Sony tape. Much better picture, much more even. Bye. Right. This would be it. See you on sound demo. Bye bye.